We'll give it just a minute so that everyone can join class. I'm excited to be here with you today. It's finally springtime in Utah. I hope it's turning to warmer weather wherever you are. It's so nice to be outside. Welcome, welcome. Are we ready to go, Stacy? Do we have everybody? We're ready to go. You can go ahead and get started. All right. Thank you. Okay, great. I am Shannon Kendall with American Crafts, and I'm really excited to be in the class today with you to show you some fun things you can do with the works all in one tool by We Are Memory Keepers. It's kind of a mouthful, I know, but it's an amazing tool, and you're going to love it. So, this week in April, in our family, we have four birthdays between April 11th and April 17th. So it's birthday week at our house. And I found out it's also Stacy's birthday this week, our moderator from Michael's. So happy birthday, everybody. And we're going to do a birthday party, everything for a party with this one awesome tool. So I'm going to be using mostly this tool. Some other things that we're gonna be using today is this splash of color paper pad from Michaels. I'm just gonna do a quick flip through so you can see how fun and colorful this paper pad is. It has glitter, it has foil, and it has all the happy rainbows in every way that you could possibly imagine. So we're going to be using that. And we're also going to use this rainbow cardstock pad also from Michaels. These supplies are all in the class list. And you can see it's got all the whole spectrum of the rainbow in there. So we're going to be using that as well. And then some other fun rainbow things that I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. So we're just gonna jump right in and I'm gonna kind of explain this tool and all the things it can do and then we'll start making. Okay, so here is the works all in one tool. I'm gonna to take this top part off. This is a stamping platform, which we'll be using a little later in class. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. Then you've got your basic trimmer blade. You've also got a scoreboard. This tool can also make pom-poms and tassels, envelopes, tags, and tabs. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of everything that you can do with this. It also, it, you can do bows with ribbon. So the possibilities are really endless with this. So we're gonna start our party with some decoration. So I'm gonna pull this out and show you this banner that I made, if I can get it untangled. Okay, so here's our party banner. It's all happy rainbows and this was all made with the works tool. So I'm gonna show you how to make banners, the ruffled ribbon. So you can kind of see this ruffled ribbon right here. Also the little tassels, okay? All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna set this in front of me. Okay, so the first little trick to making a banner is on the back of the board, you will see there's this little guide right here. So it has a slot, so you can just slide it out the end, and it's magnetic. And the cool thing about this too is that it has all the instructions on the back right here for making envelopes, banners, tags, and tabs. So you don't even have to pull out your instruction manual with this tool, it's all right here. But the instruction manual has pictures and it's really awesome. So I always keep mine with my tool anyway. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over and you can see that it has these notched sides on this one end and they line up those little teeth line up with the score lines at the top of my punch board. So we're going to make a banner. So you can see this little arrow right here that says banner and coordinating at the four inch mark on my tool, I have another little arrow that says banner. So I'm just going to match up those two arrows just like that. And you can see this is how I'm going to get an angled cut. Okay, another cool thing right on the front tells you all the measurements you need. So we're making a six inch banner so I am going to start, I've just cut down a piece of that awesome cardstock. We're gonna do the last color in my rainbow banner, which is purple. And I'm going to look on here for my banner chart, which is at the end. Six inch banner says to do a six by six paper, which I've already used my trimmer to do. And then it says, line it up at the three and a half inch mark on my guide. And that is this little ruler right here on the guide. So I'm just going to slip that under my cutting arm, line this up to three and a half and go ahead and trim. Okay, so you can see that's how I get that angled cut. Okay, save your scraps because we're gonna use those later. 
Okay, then you just flip this over and line it up to the three and a half line again. And you'll see when I do that, my corners are matching up on my cutting track right there. So now I'm just gonna cut it one more time. And it's as simple as that. Now you have a little banner, okay? So we're gonna do a two layered banner. So I'm also going to do a five inch piece using the pattern paper from the pad. So I'm gonna look up here on my five inch banner chart, five by five paper, and it says to line it up at the two and five eighths mark. So I'm going to go to two and five eighths on this ruler. Go ahead and trim, save that scrap again. Then I'm gonna flip it over on this piece. You can see that I'm actually flipping it to the other side. You can actually see that a little better with the patterned paper. Then I, my points are lining up and I'm just gonna slide my cutting tool again. And now I have my little inside banner. Okay, so now I'm just gonna shift this to the side and I'm just gonna adhere my banners first before I punch my holes to thread it on my yarn. Okay, so I just add a little adhesive, whatever adhesive you like. And on mine, I went all the way to the top. I mean, you could center it like this on your page if you wanted, but on mine, I went all the way up to the top. You could add dimensional foam squares underneath here if you wanted to create more dimension in your banner. And now I'm ready to punch holes. And this tool also allows me to do that. So right here on this side of the tool, we've got our side tab punch, our banner punch, and our envelope punch. And then on this side, we have a corner rounding punch. So it does all of those features. So I'm just gonna turn it this way. So hopefully you can see in this side camera. So right here, there is a printed guide that shows us, this also punches your tag. So this is a circle right here. So right in the center, there's two angled lines and those are for centering up your banner. So I'm just going to slide that underneath and align my banner edge with that line and punch a hole. You can see that it made that little hole right there. And then it's got it on the other side as well. So you can just keep sliding the same direction line up that side and punch it again. And that's why I glued my two layers together first so that my holes would be centered and go right through both layers on there. Okay, now we're ready to make a little ruffle before we thread it on, okay? Okay, so we're done with this little guide. This is magnetic. You can see that it, it holds it on there really nicely. So I usually slide mine off. I'm not gonna put it back away because we're gonna use it a lot. So I'm just gonna set mine to the side. But if you wanted to put it away, you would just tuck it back into that slot on the end. Okay, so I'm just gonna use another piece of paper here that is this rainbow foil polka dot. And I've cut a little strip of it. This strip measures, just so you know, five by seven eighths. And that's another thing I love about this board is the eighth marks are very clear on the ruler at the top. So it's really easy to cut and score at eighth inch marks. So I've cut a seven eighth by five inch strip, or you could use a scrap from one of your other banners. I actually think that's what this was when I ended up using it. Okay, now to score, we're gonna use these lines and we want our paper to not shift. So see if I leave my cutting just like this, my paper can move over in and out of the trimmer. So I'm gonna lift this up, flip it over, and you can see on this one, it has a little edge right there. See that little edge? And that is going to go toward the zero mark. Okay, so now you can see my paper is gonna hold flush against that edge for scoring so it doesn't go anywhere, okay? Now, my scoring tool is hidden right down in here at the bottom of my tool. So I just pull it all out. And I'm just gonna score this at intervals of half inch and quarter inch. So I'm going to start at half inch and then I'm gonna do a quarter inch from that. So that's three quarters inch. Then I'm gonna do another half inch, which brings me over to one and a quarter, and then a quarter inch, a half inch. So it's half quarter, half quarter. So we're just gonna move along the whole thing like that. Half quarter, half inch from there, quarter, half inch from there, and a quarter, inch from there, and a quarter. Okay, so your last score line should be at four and a half. So now I've got this nicely scored piece of paper and I'm just going to accordion fold it. 
all the same direction. So you can see I've kind of, that's my half inch and my quarter inch. So I've just boop, boop. And you can see it makes a little ruffle as you go along folding on those marks that you've just made. So I just use my fingers to press this one. You can use the bone folder if you want to, but I found that on those pleats, it's just easier to just do it with my fingers. Okay, so now we're ready to put this on the top of our banner. So I just use a little bit of adhesive. I'm actually gonna use hot glue. So I think they stay on, when they're dimensional like this, they stay on a little bit better with hot glue. So, so Shannon, while you're doing that, um, hmm? is the bottom of the tool, is it smooth or are there raised lines on it? Like on the flat Right surface? here on the deck? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it it has the little grooves. I'll get a close up here so you can kind of see it. So it's like a scoreboard, a trim and scoreboard on the bottom. So it does have the little grooves. You can see as I run my nail across there, it has the groove so that when you score, your stylus can go just right into that groove and stay straight. So see you like that. Yes. Great. Thank so you. It does. It's a slight recess. You're welcome. Okay, so now I've got this and I've only glued the two ends you can see because I like that to pop up off of my banner just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add some bling. These are fun rainbow bling stickers that I found at Michael's when I was browsing their bling section. And I'm just gonna take some purple ones and this is a little tip. This is a, just a piercing tool. And I love using this for picking up bling and stickers because it's just easy to get it underneath it and position it. And I can also change my mind, like if I'm on a layout or something, I can move it around and not be committed to sticking it down. Okay, so now we've added some bling. We have our banner ready to go. I'm gonna grab the other end. And I'm just using some white yarn and some rainbow yarn from Michaels. And I'm just gonna thread this through the holes on my banner. So I'm gonna go in from the front. You could go the other way. It just depends on if you want your string to come across the front of your banner or go behind. And on this one, I decided to go behind. And I'm gonna come back up through. You can really string these banners on anything. You can string them on ribbon, yarn, twine, anything you want. Okay, so now we've added our purple banner we just made to our rainbow banner. And we just need to make one more tassel for the end. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm using this fun rainbow yarn that I found at Michael's. It's so happy and bright and colorful and you never know really what you're going to get when you start making tassels and pom-poms with it because of the variated color in it and it's just so fun. So, okay, to make a tassel, we're gonna use this end of our board and hidden right here on the end are two little posts. You can see they're kind of clear. So you kind of pull these out from the side and it actually looks like two posts, but it's actually four. So they come apart into four pieces like this. And these are the little posts you use to make ribbons, tassels, and pom-poms. Okay, so to make the tassel, I'm just gonna use two of them. And I'm gonna use three actually, because you on a tassel, I have a sample here. It's made up of basically three parts. So you have your top peg, where you want your top to be, your middle peg, where you want your binding to be. And then at the very bottom is your last peg, which will be the end of the tassel. So for this one, I did pretty big ones. And you use these little holes. You can make them from that small to that big, okay? So I put my pegs in J, I, and D. And there's alphabet codes right here so you can keep track. You can make notes if you're making multiples of tassels and you want to remember, I just jot it down on my desk pad next to me where I put my pegs. Okay, and then we're going to just take our yarn and we're going to start wrapping. Okay, and the first thing you do is on this peg that's kind of far away from the other two pegs, that's the bottom of your tassel. So you're just going to secure your yarn to that peg. I just do a little overhand knot just to help it stay or underhand knot just to help it stay right there. So you can trim that off later. Especially on these fun, super soft yarns. This is a really wispy, super soft yarn. So it helps to kind of secure it. 
Okay, then we're just gonna go and work around the outside edge of our pegs. When I'm making a lot the same, I usually count how many times I go around. This time I'm just gonna kinda go till I like the color. But if I was repeating like I did for the banner beforehand, I counted, I think I did about 30 loops to get a tassel about that full. So however many times you loop around is how full your tassel will end up. And Shannon, now you can see we're moving into, yeah. How many of the pegs, do you happen to know, are the pegs included to make yes, the tassel? Yes, they're included. And do you know how many are in there? There's four and they're, four. they stack on top of each other. So you can use them tall for like big ribbon for bows, or you can break them apart and use smaller sections of the pegs. And they just come in the tool in this little spot right here, right next to your scoring stylus. So they're already there in the tool. That's great news, thank you. Yeah, everything you need to do, everything in class today is in this tool. going around okay if you're liking it like I'll sometimes squeeze it and kind of see how full it's getting I'm just going to keep going and get some green on here too so you can see how fun this yarn is it's really fun on pom-poms too okay and then when I get to the end I'm just going to use my scissors and just trim the end okay now what I need to do is tie off my top part. And since I'm hanging these on a banner, I also wanted to add this little top piece because I like having the yarn right there to just tie to my other string or my ribbon. So to do that, I'm just going to cut two little lengths of yarn. I'm just guessing these are about uh, eight or nine inches. And I'm going to take my finger and kind of separate. Let me see if I can turn this so you can see. I'm going to kind of separate in between my yarn like that. And I'm going to thread it up from the bottom. You see my finger poking out there? I'm just going to thread this one piece up. And this is going to be my tie to tie it onto my banner. Now you can see that I'm going all the way up to the top. I've just thread one end under. And now I'm just going to knot this side. I'm going to do a square knot. one more time okay and so that's gonna stay on there just like that loose so that I can tie it onto my banner in just a second okay my other piece is going to do basically the same thing but go through these two pegs that are next to each other so I'm gonna lift this up a little bit I'm gonna go between the two pegs it's a little fiddly but you'll get the hang of it sometimes I use my piercing tool or my scissors to just push it between them Okay, so you could do it right there if you want a small bubble at the top or to make it easier, you just go under this main body and do it right here. And I found that that is usually the easiest way. So that's the way that I tend to go. I don't generally thread between there. Okay, and now with this one, you're going to, I like to tie like the beginning of a knot, just an overhand knot. And then you crisscross the ends underneath come up around and you do this as many times as you want to make your little band around your tassel okay so if you want it thicker a thicker band cut a longer piece of yarn than I did because I could only go around twice with that little piece then I'm going to square knot again the top which is just right over left left over right right over left that's kind of what I did Okay, then you're gonna just slip this whole thing right off the pegs. Okay, so now we've got this. So you can see it's starting to look like a tassel, but we still have loops down here at the bottom. Okay, the last thing you need is just your scissors. I guess your scissors don't come with the tool. You'll have to have your own scissors, but usually most of us have those. And I'm just gonna stick my scissors into my bundle of yarn and snip, snip, snip. And that's how I get my ends. Okay, now you'll see that there's this little knot that I made to attach it to the peg. I'm just gonna find that little knot and snip that off. And then what I like to do is kind of even up my ends. So I bundle this all in my hand like this, and then just take my scissors, 
and kind of trim off the bits that I might not have cut perfectly straight. Sometimes when I'm cutting tassels like this, I'll use a bigger pair of scissors so that they're, they fit through the whole loop. These kind of have a shorter blade. But these are my favorite yarn scissors because they're so comfortable in my hand. Okay, so there's our little tassel. So you just fluff it up. And I just let the strings from my knot from around this middle part just hang down into my tassel and they just become part of the tassel. Then we just tie it on to our banner. So I just go put the white yarn between it. And just do a square knot again. I think I did a square knot and then I tied a bow at the top. Just like a little regular tie your shoes kind of bow with the yarn on the other ones. And then you can trim up the ends if you want to. And then you have your cute little tassel right there tied on. And these are nice because that's why I like tying them on that way because I can slide them around. So if I'm centering up my tassel, I can slide it this way, I can slide it over and it still stays tied on, but it's a little bit flexible. So there's our party banner, number one project, fun. I might just hang that in my craft room for all the time because I just love the rainbow colors of it. So fun. Okay, next, what do we need for our party? Well, we need an invitation. So let's start with that. I'm just gonna stack up my pegs again. So we're not going to use these for a minute. And I'm going to just slide them. You'll see where they go. They just slide right into this little casing right here on the side of the tool. So they just stay right in there. Okay. All right. For the invitation, we're going to do a fun invitation today. We're going to do a pop up invitation. So I'm going to show you it first. So you can kind of see what it looks like before we get going. So this is my little invitation I've made. It has a rosette on the front. Okay, it has a fun stamped envelope. We can make the envelope with this board as well. And then this unties, it has a tie closure and then it pops open. And inside is a little pop up with cards that have the information for the party and a little happy rainbow cut apart card that they can just keep. So they can take this out, it comes in and out. You could put a gift card inside of here. It's a fun little way to do an invitation or you could use it as a gift. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, to make the card base first, we are going to get my stack. We're gonna use a five by 12 inch piece of paper. And I went with cardstock for this beginning part. Here's my scraps from my banners from before. We're gonna actually use these on the card. Okay, so I have my five by 12 inch piece of paper. Now I need to score it, but you can see it's not gonna fit in here like this. So what I like to do is just swing that arm open. So that's a nice feature too. It swings open and your ruler is continuous across the top. Now I'm cutting again, I'm scoring again. So I'm going to leave my scoring insert right there with the, with the lip at the zero. And I'm going to score this, make, check my notes, four and a half and six inches. So I'm gonna go four and a half, just do a score there. Then I'm gonna move over and do six inches. Now six inches, you can see that because we flipped out our arm, the six and an eighth inch mark is our last score line on the deck. So you can keep scoring down your 12 inch mark. You just have to flip it over and keep coming from this side. Okay, so now we're just gonna score at four and a half again. So now you can see, I'm gonna fold this. I'm just gonna fold on my score lines. You can use this to help your folds. I'm gonna accordion fold again, just like we did with the ruffle ribbon. Okay, now you can kind of see the beginnings of our pop-up card right there, see that? Okay, so now I'm just going to apply adhesive. Now you don't want it at the top because you this center seam is going to become the top where you insert your gift card or your invitation details. So we just want to add glue or adhesive right here along these bottom edges. So you can use hot glue, you can use tape. I'm just gonna use my tape runner for ease in this class. If you want it to be a little more sturdy, use hot glue or double-sided tape. And I'm just going to use my stylus. You can use this end of the stylus too. 
Okay, so now I've got this, but I have a fold here, so I can't insert my information into this card yet. So now I'm going to flip this track over back to the cutting side, and I'm going to slip this just slightly over past my zero inch mark. And what's cool about this is I know it's hard to see on camera, but right here on this little guide for your scoring and cutting, the measurements continue along that. So you can still line it up to like an eighth of an inch, and that's what I'm going to do. And I found when I'm cutting multiple layers, so this is two layers of cardstock, that this trimmer likes it more when I start at the top. So I'm going to put my blade at the top and just even pressure and just slice off an eighth of an inch off the top. Okay, so now what we have is we've created our little pocket. So you can see that there. There's our little pocket. Okay. So we can insert our information inside that. Okay, now we're going to close this back up, scoot it to the side for just a moment, and we're going to decorate the inside of our card. So here's the one that I made already first. And these two pieces, if you notice, they're the scraps off of my banners that I made. Okay, so we're going to just take some scraps, random colors. This is fun when you do like a colorful themed party because you just have all the scraps already. So you just decide what colors you like. I don't know if I love the green with it, but I do like that purple. Okay, so now you can just kind of play with it how you want them. And I just add a little bit of adhesive to them. I'm going to glue this completely down. You could make these into more pockets if you wanted to. If you just glue the side and the bottom, then you could tuck stuff in there as well. Okay, I'm going to do this blue one on this side. You can see it's hanging off a little bit, but don't worry about that. We'll trim that off. Now I'm just going to do one on this side. And you can use your trimmer if you want to, or your scissors to just kind of trim up that edge. So you didn't waste any of those cuts, any of that paper from your banner. Okay, and then I want to show you this cool little trick that isn't listed as something you can do technically in the instructions manual with this tool, but I'm going to show you how to make a little kind of scalloped border with it right there. Okay, so to do that, what I did is I used this envelope punch right here on the outside edge of my arm. And I just, you just slip the paper in. I kind of just started it at the edge of here. You can start it really wherever you want to. And then you just punch. And you can see it made this little divot, which we're going to use on our envelopes. So then I just aligned this top part with the edge over here. It kind of wants to go right there because it stops at the edge. And then you just punch it again. And so now I'm getting these little scallops. And I just keep going across the whole thing. Yeah. Just moving it down. This was just a happy accident that I figured out when I was playing with the tool that I could make this fun little decorative border using this punch. So I thought I'd share it. Okay, so now we have our little decorative border. And I'm just gonna decide which way I want the front of my card. I think I want it on this side. Now, this one is wider, so you could leave it that way or you could trim it down with your trimmer and do a narrower one. I think I'm just going to do it how it is. Add that on there, just kind of letting it overlap the edge. And then I'm just going to use my trimmer or my scissors again to just trim off the little overhang. Got sticky bits on my table. I move those. Okay, so now we have our little decorative part. Now, we need our insert, which is just my information about the party right here that I'm just going to slip that in. Once you get it in once, it's a little easier to get it in and out. Okay, I'm going to trim this down just a little bit because my adhesive is coming over into my, I'm just going to trim an eighth of an inch. Because I used a wider adhesive, just going to trim this down a little bit. So I'll tell you what my measurement is. It's just under four inches square that I printed these onto. Okay, and then you just tuck it right in there. Okay, and then you can add that paper pad has these amazing cut aparts that are just so happy rainbow. So you can use your trimmer to just cut these out. 
and include one in it too. And one cool thing about this trimmer is it has little grooves here and on the sides so that you can line up your blade perfectly. So if you were cutting out, like if I just wanted to cut this out, but not this one, I can come over here, line up the groove on my trimmer. Let me turn it and see if you can see. There's a little groove on the trimmer right there. And I just line that up and then I line the side ones up to this line and I can just cut that out right there. And I know when to stop. And I can do the same thing this way, watching my line, I can know when to stop. So look around on these tools. There's lots of cool little features that help you to be successful in your creating. It's fun. Okay, so I'm just going to include this one in here as well. They can keep that. They can keep it on their fridge. You can put it in front and back, whatever you want to do. This one was really bright and happy. There's a whole bunch of really cute ones in the paper pad. So then I'm just added a few little gems again, just to give some bling to the inside. Let's see, I'll do some pink bling. Just right here. You can really decorate the inside however you want to. We're gonna do some stamping on the outside of this card. But if you wanted to, before you even put these pieces in here, you could stamp some designs on those as well if you wanted it to have more texture inside. Okay, so there's my little card. It's all ready. I might have to trim a tiny bit off this one too, just so it fits down in. It's that wide adhesive I used. Okay, just so that it stays inside my card when it's shut, okay? So that's what you do. Now, to cover the outside, because I have this gap where we've made our little pop-up, I just took a piece of patterned paper This one measures nine inches by four and seven eighths. Look how fun that is, that rainbow glitter on it. It's awesome. Okay, and then I just glue it to the outside of the card just like that. So it's just a little bit of adhesive. I like to kind of put my two, I scored it right in the middle. So it's scored at four and a half, the size of our card, and I just line up my folds and then flatten it out toward the outside edge. I found that when you line up your fold on the outside and then adhere, it works just a little bit better and that the folds line up better, which is important for your card to work right. So, okay, so now we've got the outside. Shannon, could you go over the, yeah, could you go over the measurements, the measurements? of the card and sure. the scoring one more time? Yes, for sure. Okay, so for the base of our card, we had a five inch by 12 inch piece. So it was 12 inches before. And I scored it at four and a half and six. And then I flipped it around to the other side and scored it at four and a half again, which is how we got this. Then I adhered the sides and bottom only of this little flap and cut an eighth an inch off the top and that created our little pocket. Then I just used my scraps from my six inch banners that I'd made before and just placed those on there, okay? Then this outside piece is four and seven eighths wide, so it's just slightly thinner, four and seven eighths by nine inches. And I scored it right in the middle at four and a half. And then I lined up my score lines first and then adhere the paper this way and then that way. That's the best way to get it, the fold to line up so that your pop-up works right. Does that help? Yes, that's great. I probably should type up instructions for all this so you guys can make it again. <laughs> and we okay, are and then for the- We are getting quite a few- Oh, sorry, go ahead. Of, sorry, we're getting okay, quite a few let's questions take a minute. about the glue tool that you're using. I know you're mentioning about okay. the size of it, so they just want to know a little bit more information about the, the adhesive. Sure. So I'm I'm using American Crafts Sticky Thumb glue. I don't know if you carry this at Michael's or not. It's just what I have at my desk here at work at American Crafts, and it is a tape runner. So it has the little square adhesive double-sided tape runners on the side, and this one measures about two centimeters, well, one centimeter wide. So what does that make it? Like almost three eighths 
of an inch wide. Um, sometimes, I, I mean, I love this runner. It works for a long time. It has a lot of adhesive in there. But um, if you want skinnier adhesive so you have more room in your pocket, anything like that, then you might want to use something that's thinner. So you could lay down a really thin line of hot glue, or you could use quarter inch or eighth inch um, double-sided tape. That would be a little bit thinner. I know that there's a really skinny double-sided tape and I love that, I love using that. It's just a little harder to use on camera in class. So I went ahead and used my tape runner today. But because you have to peel off all the backings, I didn't want you guys like just watching me peel backings for the whole class. So that's why I went with this one. But um, you can use really anything that you like. And this one is just a permanent double-sided tape runner. Great. That I'm using, it's just a little wider. Does that help? Yes, Any other that questions? Helps. Nope, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so now on the outside of our card, we're going to do a few of decorations. So I want to show you how to make a rosette and how to use the stamping feature of the tool. Okay, so I just used scraps again. Let's stamp first. Okay, so these are more scraps from my banners and things that I've done. Okay, and this paper pad has pattern on one side and white on the other. So you can use you can stamp directly onto the back of these pieces and use your scraps that way too, which is what I used right there. So, okay, so here's our stamping platform. It has two little magnets right here at the top that coordinate with these two little magnets that are spring loaded little posts. I don't know if you can see those going up and down right there. And I just set that right on there, okay? Then I'm gonna use these fun birthday stamps that I found at Michael's. Let's do the yippee phrase again. So these are acrylic stamps. So you can use acrylic stamps or you can use the foam stamps that are not on wood blocks. So they have to be just like the kind that you can stick to an acrylic block. Okay, and I'm just gonna decide where I want to. This is a little trick. So I'm gonna flip this cutting tool over to where my guide is on the side again for scoring. And that will help hold my little strip of paper in place from sliding around when I'm stamping. But you can also, if you flip this up on the back, you can see these two little magnets. The whole deck of this tool is magnetic. So there's these two little magnets that have little flaps on the back. You can pull those to the front and use those also to help you hold down your paper while you're stamping. So if you wanted to put it right here, smack in the middle, you can. You can just use the two little, the two little magnets to use it. If you're just doing something real quick and you wanna put it up against this bar, that's another little tip to hold it still. Let's just do it right here. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, this is another trick. I'm going to mount my stamp onto my acrylic by laying it down first, right directly where I want it to print on my paper. So I have my paper here, I'm laying my stamp on top of it. Then I'm just gonna attach my stamping plate and I'm gonna pick up my stamp by pushing down. So now you can see my stamp is on my plate exactly where I need it to be to line up. This tool is super awesome when you're doing invitations because you know if you're inviting 10 people and you're making 10 of the same thing, you only have to position your stamp the one time and then just place your paper in the same place each time. Okay, I'm gonna use these little inks. And while my stamp is on the deck, I'm just going to, I'm gonna do a two color one. Sometimes for tiny things, I like these tiny little inks. I don't think these are the exact ones on my class list, but they're very, very similar to what's on the class list. Then I'm going to take my green. So this is a two-tone. So I did blue about halfway up the stamp. Now I'm gonna do green a little bit above that. Okay, and I'm just gonna place it back down and press, making sure I get a good impression. So you can see there, I have my cute little stamped yippee in two-tone. Okay, so super easy, it's really great. And I know that this has lines on it, but you can tell they don't show up when I stamp on them. I've never had a problem with it. If you wanted to, you could also lay a scrap piece of paper underneath or a thicker cardstock underneath your stamping so that um, if you were ended up getting lines, which I don't, I've never had that happen, but if you did, you could just, you know, build up your base just a little bit or put a little thin sheet of foam there or something, but I found I don't even need it. Okay, so now there's two things you can do to dovetail the end of your banner. You could use your scissors, and that's what I did here on the yay, and I did this yay the same way. I just used a different stamp, lined it up on my scrap, and did it the same way. 
And then you can dovetail it with your scissors like I did, or you can turn this around and you can use the envelope punch again to dovetail the end of your banner. So I just try to center it kind of on the tool and you can see that does a little dovetail. You see that? So cute. So if you don't want to do it with your scissors, you just want to center that in there and you can tell I just kind of eyeballed it and it still looks really great. So then you just would layer that underneath your rosette. So I would take my strips. I want to make sure and cover everything in class. So I'm not going to repeat and do this next one because I want to make sure to get to rosettes and envelopes. So I want to make sure to show you guys everything. So I'm just going to show you this one stamping and you would just create the same thing the same way to do the yay. And then these little banners were just scraps that I just trimmed. They were all different sizes scraps and I just trimmed them all out and just layered them up and it made it really fun. So I would glue on this end first. Right and adhere it where you want it and just leave this end open because we're going to need to slip our ribbon underneath it. Okay, so let's do our rosette so I can show you how to do a rosette real quick. I'm just going to put my magnets back on the back. So while you're doing that Shannon, even though we're not going to do the next one, would you still give briefly how you would clean your stamps before oh, sure. I can just show you because I'm going to take this off. I like baby wipes. <laughs> I don't know. That's just my favorite thing. I used to work at a stamping company and that's what we used there on our acrylic stamps and it worked great. So these are just regular, regular old baby wipes. You can use stamp cleaner and a stamp clean tool if you want to, but I found that I just like baby wipes. And sometimes I'll wad this up and stick it back down into my baby wipe container. And that way I can use it a few times and it doesn't dry out. So I'm gonna do that now. And then you just clean it and you just put it right back on the carrier sheet. There you go. And there's that yay. This The yay is three individual stamps and I would do it the same way. I would lay down my paper and then just place each stamp I wanted on my paper and then pick it up with the plate itself and do it that same exact way. It's super easy, super fun. Okay, so for a rosette, I have my scoring bar up, my little lip there to hold my thing in place, have my stylus, and this one's really easy. This is just a scrap again from my banners. This is one inch by five inches, and I'm gonna score on the five inch side every quarter inch all the way along. Just going every quarter inch. And then our favorite accordion fold. Sometimes things look really hard to make and then you get going and you realize how simple it really is. Okay, so there's my scored piece. And now I'm just gonna accordion fold this whole thing. Okay, I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of pinch it together. Just fan fold, accordion fold, like back to first grade when you made fan paper fans. Again, I'm just using my fingers to kind of press it. Um, but you could also use the bone folder. This one's an itty bitty little rosette. You can make these same thing, just make it wider. So this is a one inch rosette. You could make a five inch rosette if you wanted and end up like this big, it's awesome. But since this is on our, on our invitation, we need it small. So I would just do the same thing to a second strip. So to make a full rosette, you need two of these. So you can see how it kind of comes around. So I'll just quickly do this so I can show you the finished full rosette. Should have pre-scored one of these. Is there any questions while I'm scoring this? Yes, I was gonna wait till the very end for this one, um, but we're getting a lot of questions about your hot glue stand. I have a feeling you're uh -huh. gonna tell me that you didn't get it from Michaels, um, but do you happen to know where you got it? Uh, yes, so this is the brand new hot glue gun that was released just this year by We Are Memory Keepers. So I don't know if Michaels is going to be carrying it or not, but they are 
brand new to We Are Memory Keepers, and it just has the little stand right there and some little spots to put your glue sticks and then the spot to wrap your cord around the outside. So they come in pink, mint, and gray. Um, they are from We Are Memory Keepers. Again, this is what I use at my desk here at American Crafts, and that's where it came from. So I'm not sure, though, if Michaels is carrying it or not, because it is literally brand new, like it was just announced just barely. Okay, well, we'll check into it and see. So thank you. Okay, yes. Okay. So now I have two of these little guys. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the two ends. So you have one end that's flipping up and one end that's flipping down. And you're going to put a little tiny bit of glue on the one little flap and just bring them together. Okay, so now I've created one long strip and then to make the rosette, you just do it again on this side. Now on this end, because of how I folded it and the length of it, I ended up with two that are going down. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip off just the end so that I have one going up. Does that make sense? Because that's how they come together. You just need to put a little bit of glue again on this. For rosettes, again, I like stronger adhesive. You can see I went to my hot glue gun. Just because the force of the fold is kind of great on the paper, I find that with this type of runner on a rosette, it likes to pop apart. So I use hot glue or double-sided tape. Okay, so now we have our little rosette like this. And then to make it a circle, all you do is push down the center like that and see how we have our rosette. Okay, to hold it, because if I let go of this, it's just gonna pop up, right? So I'm just gonna take a little scrap again of paper off of my scraps, and I'm gonna put some glue down on it. Just a glob of hot glue. And I'm just gonna do that same thing I just did again, but I'm going to whoop, center my, can you see that? Center my rosette over my little base. I'm gonna bring everything together down onto that hot glue. And you can see I cut a square scrap, doesn't really matter. It just has to be kind of smaller than your end rosette. Okay, I'm gonna hold it there until my glue cools. There you go. Now it's not gonna pop up and that's what the back looks like. But because I'm gluing this straight down onto my card, I don't care really what the back looks like, right? And so this one I might need to shift over, see that? And then to make the centers of your rosettes fun, it's fun to add, you could add a punched little circle, you can end, but since I have these awesome blings, I'm just gonna add another bling right to the center. And they're adhesive backed. You could put a little dab of hot glue on the back if you feel, but these, these hold pretty good. Then you have a nice little sparkly bling right there in the middle of your rosette. So that's how you do a rosette. Hey, I'm gonna set that aside. So then to just do the string closure real quick, I love, love, love this product at Michaels. So these are trim bundles by Celebrate It at Michaels and they come in all different color schemes. And this one is so happy to me. It's just all these rainbow trims. So you've got all these different things and that's what I use today on, on everything. So you could just pick whatever trim you want. Let's do this blue rickrack. And I just kind of wrap it around my card. See about how much I need plus a little for the bow. Then I can use that one on another one. And you would just wrap it around. And then what holds it to the card is I would actually then at this point put glue underneath right here. And then that would hold it down. So you could wait to assemble everything at the end like this if you want to. Okay, and now you can see my string is held on. And then you could just do a little bow or a little knot on the front with rickrack and knots a little easier. And then just trim up your ends and you have your little closure. So super easy, super fun. They can be different, but still you're doing the same process. So it can be really fast. Okay. Let's do an envelope really quick. <clears throat> okay. So I'm back to my guide again. I'm gonna set my stamping tool to the side. I'm going to use my scoring stylus. So I'm gonna just keep that out. And I'm gonna go to the envelope and 
over here we used the banner on the four inch mark. Now I'm gonna turn it this way and use these top teeth and I'm gonna line up the little triangle next to envelope to the three inch mark because right above that is a little triangle and envelope again. So you just line that up right there, okay? Then I'm gonna see what size envelope I want. So our card ended up being four and a half by five. So on this chart, you just look for the four and a half by five inch card. The first column is your card size. And then right next to it, it tells you to make an envelope to fit that. You need a seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths inch piece of paper. So here's my seven and seven eighths piece of paper. And then the last measurement is your alignment guide measurement again, which is this ruler right here. And it says to line it up at four, at three and five eighths. So three and five eighths is right there. Now, on envelopes, we're gonna start, our first score is going to be right here along the side. It's actually the two inch mark, but it's right along the side of the guide where we, kind of where we cut, cut before over here. Now we're gonna score right here, just on this first one. Okay, so this is where some people get tripped up. So pay close attention. So I did one score line right here on the two inch mark. Now I'm gonna take that score line and I'm going to line it up to this little groove on the guide right here that's called the score guide. So now I'm going to line up, rather than lining up down here again on this guide, I'm just going to place my score line right here on the score guide. And then I'm gonna score again at two inches. And for the rest of them, that's what you do. So your first one uses this score line and the rest use this score line guide. So I'm lining up that score line goes right there, right into that notch. I'm just gonna hold it still, score along the edge, rotate it one more time, score along the edge. So it's all four sides. So I've got this nice and scored on all four sides. Okay, you can kind of see. But now I need to punch out these little corners that it left. There's these little corners. So that's where I'm gonna use this envelope punch, which we used to make our border before. So to do this one, you see on the tool, there's this little arm that comes off and it lines up with the guide on the, on the deck of the tool. So that goes along your score line. So you just line that up and punch. And then that takes out that little excess piece that you need to get rid of before you can fold your envelope cleanly. And you just keep going all around the sides until you have all four punched. And then you just assemble your envelope. So you just fold up on all the sides. And then on this part, you can kind of decide how you like it. Like if you like it staggered, your folds, I kind of tend to do mine so that the bottom piece comes up. And then you can just use whatever adhesive you like again. Fold it up and you have your little envelope. And then this flap folds down. Now, if you wanted to, you can stamp on this as well. Just put it all folded right in here and stamp on it. And that's what I did on this one. I just used the banner stamp and just stamped on the front of my envelope, leaving a space for me to address it down here. So that's what I did. And then this card will fit inside this envelope. And it's nice. It's a nice bulky envelope, so it gives lots of room for that rosette to still fit inside there. Okay, so there's an envelope, but I wanna show you something else cool that isn't in the instruction book for this that you can do using the envelope tool the same way. And it's this little gift box. So this is basically, a little box is basically a chunky envelope. So I'm just gonna show you how I did that, okay? All right. So for the box, grab my piece of paper. So this size box, I think it's about three inches. Let me see. It's almost three inches, two and three fourths inch square. I used a six by six piece of paper. So I trimmed this already down to six by six inches. And then I'm gonna use, leave this at the envelope guide. Okay. And I'm going to line it up and I'm going to score on four sides. I'm gonna actually score it on all four sides, just like we did the envelope, but I'm gonna score it twice, which is how we get this little space right here, okay? So I'm gonna score it first at two and an eighth guide mark. So here's two and an eighth. 
So I go alongside here at two and an eighth on my mark. And then again, I'm going to line up my score line now to this score guide for the rest of my score lines. Actually, I might do it different. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't wanna mess you up. Okay, so two, I did it this way. Okay, backtrack. So I'm gonna do two inches and then I'm gonna slide it down to three and seven eighths. Sorry for that. Okay, and I'm gonna do it there again. Okay, on the box, I'm gonna do it lining up every time on these. So ignore this little score guide. I almost messed us up. Okay. Two and an eighth. Three and seven eighths. Rotate it. Two and an eighth. So the box is a little different than the envelope, which is why I almost screwed myself up. Three and seven eighths. And then here's our last side. Two and an eighth. Three and seven eighths. Okay, then you're just gonna use your punch again and punch the same way, there's going to be two on each side, though, because you want it on each of those score lines we made. Okay, then you're going to take one end with the point up and you're going to trim just on the score line, just up to the next vertical horizontal score line. And what that has done is allowed us to make these little flaps. And this is how we did our box. So then these sides come up. Just basically you fold on all the score lines. You know we're getting close to the end of class, so I'm not gonna really go into it, but you just glue and bring the ends together. And then I just made a little wrap following the instructions in the tool. I did a tag on two sides and wrapped it around and tied it together with some of that string. And you can fill this with candy, make a little pennant flag, just like we did on the card front with the person's names on it. And this could be a little take home box from your party. So there's just one more thing I wanna show you super quick before you go, which is using all the things you already know how to do. So I'm just gonna show them to you super fast, okay? So I made cupcake toppers, cause what's a party without cake, right? So just really quickly, here's a banner using the tiniest banner. Here's a rosette and here's another rosette that I just added a little bow to. So these are my little cupcake toppers. Look how cute they are inside here. Okay, so think big, think small when you use this tool. It can do really anything. And all of the instructions come with the tool to do all of these things, even the little things that I didn't get a chance to show you in class today yet. But you can do the pom poms, you could do a tassel hanging off of there. It's just so fun to use and I hope you'll give it a try for your next party. That's great, Shannon. Everyone really enjoyed it. Thank awesome. you. So glad. I, there's so many more things I could show you guys, but just give it a try. See what you come up with. Well, they definitely, everybody's chiming in. They want more classes. So we'll be getting okay, awesome. shortly for more classes. Sounds good. All right, great. Thank I'm doing you. another one using this tool late, later in the week too. <laughs> great, great. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye.